Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel, right? So it's December time and we are well underway with our champion year end rankings. I do these twice a year at June and in December and uh, basically it's always quite interesting to see how the game changes. So far we have done a ton of ranking videos. This is going to be the 11th video in the series where we are ranking top 20 best champions in MCOC all things considered all the classes all the champions and the following videos will be a new tier list and then we're gonna head to the battleground section where we have 10 best bg defenders attackers dual purpose champions and also a new bg tier list released so uh as always the mandatory disclaimer here all of these are at the very least to a degree subjective i do try to take in consideration my personal view of the game and the way how i th see things as well as current game relevance and trends in all of these lists this time around i valued more more competitive game modes more so than cabby q story content stuff like that because the theory always is if a co if a champion is potent powerful and uh, performing well enough in the most competitive scenarios they will almost always be extremely good for virtually everything else otherwise they wouldn't be as popular with the most hardcore dedicated and knowledgeable of the player bases and ultimately then the choice is whether you can rank up something that uh, does great when you synergize it up in you know in story content or you can rank up a champion that will do great in alliance war will do great in battlegrounds and also do great in story content so to me the choice there is clear obviously you know some people might see things things differently we all value different things in the game we do have our own play styles preferred mastery setups favorite champions all that other stuff and that is perfectly fine the purpose of this list is not to be some sort of bible or law it's more so as a food for thought as a source for discussion and debate it's always meant to be respectful in the comments section and uh, just accept the fact that not everybody sees the game exactly the way you do and these lists are representation of as i said my current views on the game as well as current game relevance trends popularity and things like that so all that being said obviously every single champion on this list is going to be an amazing champion regardless whether they make it at spot 19 because this time around we're doing top 20 or they are in spot 5 or 8 all of these champions are fantastic they will be somebody's favorite somebody's going to make an argument for them being the best one or they should be in top 5 and things like that but reality is all of these champions do compete for our attention for our resources our catalysts our time to learn them so on and so forth and to me these are the champions that will end up being the winners ultimately in vast majority of the cases again just to explain i do not take any game mode as a sole deciding factor for these lists if i would have to put uh it in kind of like point perspective i think you can earn up to let's say about a third of your points or about half of your points in story content incursions and every single other game factor and then you get about a third of your points in alliance war and about a third of your points for battlegrounds because those are the more competitive game modes that ultimately do uh, i personally believe matter the most when it comes to competitive kind of like gameplay so here we can see the old list there will be quite few changes from the old list i do believe that most of these champions obviously do make a return but there will be definitely a handful of drops in the rankings as uh, you guys probably su suspected already based on the individual class videos previously i put ghost up top as i had been for many many years then we have hercules torch kingpin apoc doom kitty cgr tigra aa nimrod mr fantastic nick fury warlock and hyperion and we're gonna see how all of these things shake up so let's jump to aunt may everybody's favorite website and obviously there will be a ton of amazing champions that do not quite make the list if you are interested of my opinions of those specific champions that might be missing from that list and are still absolutely amazing then definitely check out the class ranking videos as i said this is a 10th video in the series and i already did each individual top 10 per class and additional 
quick disclaimer i'm not obviously even trying to include here mantis atuma or jessica jones as those are fresh 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 new champions and we really do not have a clear picture of their potential that being said in spot number 20 we are going to start off a champion that um, might well we'll see where the game goes but it might be pretty much the last time we see him in one of those lists and that is a magneto so magneto obviously is extremely capable champion and he has shaped the game which is a definitely quite a big acknowledgement now when placing for lance defense you do need to account whether the character is metal or not we do see him periodically in top tier balgrans decks as well pending on the metas and his suitability with them uh, but uh, at the same time magneto has always been i think for most people one of those champions that you quite literally look as a extremely extremely valuable tool but not necessarily as an enjoyable fun champion for you to use and run your quests with daily and stuff like that and that kind of explains my personal relationship with magneto as well i did not get the opportunity to use him for act six but i can definitely tell you that in act six he now is one of the best boss killer champions that you can possibly find but in act seven where we had these choice nodes before the boss fights i very rarely took magneto on my questing team because I did not want to use him any more than it was necessary. But it is, again, without a question that he often is one of the, if not the best option for a ton of fights, and that includes boss fights. And it's kind of similar virtually everywhere in the game. He's not the champion you want to play or use. He is the champion you kind of have to or you are better off using. And... I do think that kind of hinders him a bit. I do think if he had more exciting, interesting playstyle, he would be more popular in the game overall and more people would be kind of trying to do more things with him. But ultimately, there is no denying the potential of this champion. He can be also somewhat finicky and annoying as a defender with his unstoppable heavy attacks therefore if you put him on stun immune nodes or some other nodes that basically prevent you from hitting him while he's stunned like one eye open he can become quite a troublesome placement where you basically have to rely on intercepts as your only source of openings and that is always quite risky as well but ultimately magneto definitely you know is very specialized champion he is, let's say, somewhat average in a casual matchup where opponent is not metal. But if you do use Magneto against the metal champion, obviously it is going to be a completely different fight. And this champion brings completely different power level to the game. And uh, therefore, I do think he is worthy of making this list. Making uh, spot number 19, this is another champion that I just can't seem to connect with fully, but I am more than willing to acknowledge that this champion is awesome, and that is Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi uh, is quintessentially, you know, cl as close to a perfect or brilliant skill champion as you can master. Uh, there is extremely potent and accessible purify abilities with his cleanse mechanic and his cheat strikes there is one of the best slow slow access well in the game there's also super easy access to openings where you can stun even through block and then access to unblockable guaranteed critical hits he also you know has a very solid damage output and in logger fights he can increase it further uh, the only thing really that's missing from him as a skilled champion would be some sort of damage over time effect, I suppose. But uh, he does have a burst of physical damage, so that kind of slightly covers it occasionally with his sig ability. But ultimately, Shang-Chi is great. There's just something that I can't personally get myself nearly necessarily, you know, to absolutely love or enjoy this character. But there is no denying that he is a successful character to be added to the game he's many people's favorite character and you can see why he does see use in all of the competitive game modes battlegrounds alliance war he is also a solid kind of more casual questing champion but most importantly with the bits of utility that he has he often is one of the better options for you to uh, take in a quest as well therefore we do see him pretty much everywhere across the board and uh that is kind of how I see Shang-Chi. He's great, kind of like perfectly manufactured skilled champion in a laboratory, but I just can't seem to find, I don't know, that, that, that soul, that fun with the character. 
But ultimately, none of that matters because this list isn't just my preference. And uh, there is, again, no denying that Shang-Chi is extremely potent and capable champion. Definitely a very, very good addition to the contest. A very useful toolbox, as I mentioned, to how the thing that I do love most about him is you can decide you know, which abilities you need for the fight and focus on those solely. And then obviously there are the guaranteed crit level 2s, synergize extremely well with power back boosts, let's say for Alliance War. And uh, also, yeah, just the fact that all his fights are so controlled. So there we go. We have Shang-Chi in spot number 19. Moving on to spot number 18. And this is going to shock a lot of people. And I think at the moment I am going to put Apoch there. And... Uh, I know that a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I do genuinely feel like APOC has lost quite a bit of ground overall, uh, as was evident in like the mutant ranking list as well, when he went from the best mutant in the game, in my opinion, to the third best. And uh, this is where he ends up on my personal valuation list again. We'll see if he regains his uh, popularity for Alliance Wars. Uh, because he has taken a seat back there as well to a degree, uh, partially because, you know, quite often can turn out to be quite costly to run him, but that's not necessarily the issue. Obviously, the issue with APOC and his kind of decline in overall visibility in the game has to do with Balgrounds. He is not a good Balgrounds champion because he's just too slow. APOC's damage output is great, when you have him at four charges, so typically when you bring in Cable or when you manage to ramp him up in a quest against Mutant. And when it comes to Battlegrounds, you know, there are far more effective Mutant Hunters, Mutant Killers available from Teclas than we have with APOC. And APOC in Battlegrounds at best is, you know, somewhat hindersome defender, but that's just about it. And then ultimately, obviously, when it comes to questing and incursions and making horsemen and all that other stuff, APOC is still great. There's no question about it. APOC is an amazing character. One of the things that I like most about Apocalypse is the fact that he has that disorient immunity and also, you know, just in general, he holds a great amount of toolbox in his kit. Uh, but at the moment, it's just not what the game needs in a competitive perspective, I would say. Like... Uh, I have 30 rank 4s and APOC is not one of them, because when it comes to Alliance War, for instance, you know, we have a handful of rank 4s already there, so there's no particular need for me to do that. And uh, anywhere else in the game, you know, if I need him, but I, I can use him as a rank 3, I don't think that rank 4s are a must for any content in the game outside of competitive content where other players are involved. And I still use him here and there, but definitely significantly less. And then ultimately also the fact that he's not great Battleground champion has kind of like decreased the urgency to rank him up. Eventually I probably will, but as I said, I just don't think at the moment he is what the game needs on a more competitive scale. However, here is a very, very important distinction, I think, for more progressing players, for players that do have a ton of story content or you know, just in general, other game modes to explore and venture into. I do still think he is an extremely valuable addition to the game uh, because of his utility, because of how well he helps mutant class in general, or how amazing he turns other champions with his synergy teams. And we definitely haven't seen last of him. If anything, I do expect him to rise slightly in the next rankings as we are getting more content promised to us by Kabam there is some, some sort of Everest content coming to the game and with Strife Synergy those are arguably the best two Everest champions that we have available in the game additionally you know he might play quite a big role in the fifth eternity of pain or there might be some other project that Kabam is working on where I can fully expect APOC being you know one of the power players so just because he has dropped in rankings for this particular uh, session do not underestimate the character as a whole but this is where i see him currently i do not see him as as a must rank up for the most competitive players for those who are trying to uh you know go up against other summoners because at the moment in the game there's just not that much for him ultimately um if obviously we are putting the emphasis on more competitive game modes as i said for story content, for 
more casual things, I do think he can still be amazing. And ultimately, he is a great, great character. Moving on, spot number 17. And spot number 17, I am giving to... Nick Fury. Now, Nick Fury was in the danger of kind of sliding out of relevance for quite a while, where he had basically always been a solid defender for Lions War, and uh, that, that was his kind of like last fortress, last stronghold for a while. But then as the meta changes, as more and more new champions get added, his utility is sliding back. Additionally, to top of that, the hit on the Mole Man was definitely quite beneficial for Nick Fury as well. Because for plenty of fights where people have went back to using Nick Fury in Alliance War, let's say, people would have used Mole Man previously, just simple as that. And... Uh, Additionally, obviously, Battlegrounds has made Nick Fury even more relevant as a defender. Primarily, I would say about 80% defender, 20% offensive champion when need be. And then there's all the synergies and questing content that he can provide help with as well. So ultimately, I do think that Nick Fury is remaining stable, if not slightly increasing in his relevance. The problem is that there are obviously quite a few new superstars arriving in the game which is why he is not necessarily higher on the list. But at the same time, he is, I think, very valuable addition to everybody's roster. He plays a major role in Battlegrounds, a major role in Alliance Wars. He is also extremely capable questing champion. There are still quite a few tricks up his sleeve that I absolutely love about him he also is one of those skill characters that seems to pretty much do it all where he has access to uh, high damage output even without bleed when you are in real nick fury form because that fury is absolutely massive he has great base stats especially his crit rate i believe is uh, top five highest in a game or close to that and uh, obviously ability to bypass miss and evade is also extremely relevant ability to shrug off debuffs and perhaps most importantly to go permanently unblockable when called for it so there are a lot of reasons to want to have access to this champion he still is one of the better uses for a generic gem in my opinion the one thing that has been quite interesting with nick fury um, is that his sig ability all of a sudden kind of has become relevant because previously nick fury was always classified as a champion sig one and go and you're going to be happy but now if you do want to rely on your nick fury as let's say a battlegrounds defender or even alliance wars obviously high sig nick fury does uh work better because he degens himself slower thus opponent is forced to spend significantly longer amount of time waiting for the degen or engaging in much much more dangerous nick fury so that sig ability is kind of becoming more relevant which is quite interesting but ultimately i do think that nick fury again is one of those champions uh, that just pretty much great everywhere and there are obviously his skeptics people who are not fans of him especially if you do use him for questing there are people who dislike playing with like 30% health pool. But one of the things that Alliance War should have taught us that Nick Fury, even without entering his uh, second life, without having his life model decoy destroyed, has a lot of powerful abilities in his base kit. And yes, you do miss that massive Fury from that huge damage increase. But even with that, he is definitely quite capable. I think there's one Alliance War video where just by the virtue of having Nick Fury as that champion, that... Uh, has that second life and i also put on indestructible three boots i virtually did all my fights just completely pushing opponents to level three and seeing if i can kill them before they reached three bars of power and uh, he almost always did get close to that uh, but you know it worked out because he can tank the level threes and everything else and he he does offer a huge huge safety net as well for stuff like alliance war where it is extremely important because in alliance war you know, it doesn't really matter whether you get hit or exactly how the fight goes what or how long you spend in it and how much health you have remaining, unlike in Battlegrounds. What matters in Alliance War is the fact, you know, that you do not die or time out. And uh, Nick Fury is uh, one of those champions that just gives you a very easy comfort blanket, I would say. Right, past Nick, another champion that has always been one of my personal favorites. It was champion that I took the SIG 200 
at the very beginning as he came out. It was my first SIG 200 tech champion, and that's Warlock. And there is not much else to say about Warlock. Warlock is just a powerhouse virtually everywhere, and has always been, and he engages his turbo super cyan mode in battlegrounds and alliance or specifically because opponents almost always run the willpower mastery and when where there is willpower warlock is effectively the best power control champion in the game but even without that access to armor ups armor breaks bleed shock power control immunities he's just a very 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 utilitarian swiss knife package packed in a crazy awesome animation style as well and He's not going anywhere. He hasn't gone anywhere, and I don't really see him going, you know, anywhere in the near future either, because as long as there is willpower, I think he will have value in the game. And that's quite as simple as that about Warlock, and I do value the champion extremely highly. I think, you know, he has time and time again proved himself in all of these game ones. I think the scariest thing is when you're in alliance or in battlegrounds and uh, realize opponents are not running willpower because then all of a sudden the fight becomes significantly harder either way moving on spot number 15. spot number 15 for now there is an argument to be had of placing this guy higher but i'm gonna place hyperion in spot number 15. because hyperion again as i explained in detail in my cosmic video is not always the best option or go-to option or ideal option but he is an option so many times it's quite ridiculous and all of that stems from just the huge amount of excess power that he has <laughs> that is what makes hyperion as good the champion came out in 2016 champion is six years old he's a full-fledged toddler now and he hasn't been altered in any way since the release and he has survived the test of time and if anything in many ways he's becoming more relevant than he has been he was one of those champions for a very long time kabam did not release as a six star now that they have he is regaining his you know popularity even with the newer champ newer players and uh we did see him plenty of use in alliance war as second tide attacker especially in recent couple of metas we see him on defense as well because without a specific counter he can be an extremely troublesome opponent then we see him in battlegrounds defender attacker questing champion virtually everywhere and the cooler thing about hyperion is just the fact that you can play him in many many different ways and as i said even if he doesn't have the perfect kit to get around some you know specific thing he has so much utility in the way you can play him that uh, he is often capable of finding a way in that fight as i said fighting electros he's a very good electro counter for instance just because you can spam your level ones exclusively and deal a ton of damage with your incinerates and those laser beams do not really make contact then obviously you can defeat a killmonger with him there are better killmonger counters without a doubt but he's a really really good one you can you know pretty much spend the entire fight throwing your level threes if you have to if there are some nodes preventing you from hitting the opponent directly or doing something like that and there's just so much that you can do with the guy on top of that there's also ability to regenerate access damage or time effects stuns furies power gain <laughs> yeah hyperion is i think you know amazing champion across the board Spot number 14, and here we are going to be heading to the Mystic class at the moment. And I do believe that this actually might increase, or who knows, maybe it's going to stay stagnant. But Rintra is one of the newer champions added to the game, and uh, he has definitely proved himself. He is everywhere. He is people's, you know, on top of the people's wish lists. Everybody who doesn't have a Rintra wants one. Everybody who has one ranks him. Everybody who has ranked him loves him. That kind of describes Rintra very well, because obviously he has one of the biggest health pools, if not the biggest health pool in the game. I actually don't remember from the top of my head. I can actually quickly go and double check. So if we go to base stats and HP, very quick check. Now Rintra is third biggest health pool in the game. And uh, that shows he is extremely tanky defender, especially given the fact that he has additional crit and energy resistances. And the fact that he plays neutralize on the attacker when he's being used as a defender often hinders so many champions from you know fighting at their full strength against Rintra. then on top of that he's also a champion that's great at wasting time because his special animations seem to last forever 
and uh, offensively obviously he is also one of the three actively utilized neutralized champions in the game which holds a tremendous amount of value and uh, the cool thing about Ranger is the fact that he delivers majority of his damage in the form of a massive level 2 that often is big enough uh, to you know finish fights in a single level 2 even if it doesn't crit. So ultimately I do think Rintry deserves this place, he has showed us what he can do and uh, he's still going strong so there's no telling where he's going to stop. Spot number 13, spot number 13, lucky number 13 is going to go down to Scorpion, another newer addition again and another testament to how successful this year has been with the champion editions I think overall is definitely Scorpion because he is an extremely utilitarian machine that kind of appeals to the best aspects of virtually everything science class has to offer with an additional caveat where you can also turn him into an absolute damage monster with just single synergy without any synergies his damage is more than adequate i would say uh, for the amount of utility that he has but if you do pair him up with that agent venom or venom synergy he can turn into an absolute monster in the damage department but uh, even as he is when you do not use any synergies obviously the ability to block unblockable special attacks ability to siphon the healing from your opponents in order to sustain yourself also makes him one of the most liquid courage double edge friendly science champion which is quite relevant especially in the science class uh, where we don't have that many great options that would work with recall and then ultimately the fact that he is the only rupture immune champion in the game and he has multiple immunities that you can you know choose from based on which debuffs you go with uh, and also the fact that you <laughs> can go with three different offensive debuffs and whichever one you need in any given fight uh, just gives him a great amount of usability utility and make sure that there are you know the matchups where most champions in similar cases would not be able to be used he works just fine but massive attack rating and block proficiency obviously do work in his favor tremendously but uh, one of the cooler things that I ultimately do like about Scorpion is just the nature how Kabam chose the debuffs because we have poison that inflicts direct damage that ignores all the resistances and also reduces opponent's healing then we have shock that inflicts energy damage which is again a different form of utility when it's needed and we have rupture which is uh, damage over time effect that inflicts physical damage and the fact that energy and physical damage obviously do interact with opponents resistances means that you can benefit from champions that have these resistances in negative numbers as well and yeah that is what is that to talk about scorpion access to petrify access to taunt blocking and blockable special attacks great great science champion and i think this is our spot here spot number 12 at the moment and this is again one champion that is still relatively new to the game in my opinion we could easily see him rise in value even further and that is going to be gallon now gallon is exactly what he's meant to be and that's what i like about the character where He's nowhere near the fastest, I don't know, Everest form content character unless there is something that supercharges his planetary mass. And that's fine because he is designed to be a character that does, that does basically one huge burst of damage and is almost perfect or ideal for short, shorter and medium level fights. And also then he packs in a ton of utility and kind of unconventional cosmic abilities where his damage basically cannot be evaded as a cosmic character it is quite unusual that he doesn't have like you know massive damage on his base hits it, all of it is being delivered with that direct damage from that detonation of the harvest and uh, the fact that he's nullified and fate seal immune as a cosmic character is definitely something that's brand new and without a doubt it's going to become more and more useful uh, as evident by the upcoming metas in Battlegrounds, you know, his ability to be immune to power manipulation is going to be extremely powerful. And then he just seems to fit exactly the needs that the players have right now. Exactly the type of thing where I spoke about 
Apocalypse, where Apocalypse doesn't do what we need the champions to do right now in order to be at the top of this list. Galen has those things. Galen is great for battlegrounds. Galen is great for alliance war attack, especially in you know, specific lanes. He's without the question the best option he's definitely a solid defender both for battlegrounds and alliance war and he's also great for any more casual content uh, or any questing situations where you are not dealing with like massive massive health pools and then whenever there are these specialized scenarios uh, then he's just insane one of the best examples of where he turns out to be completely bonkers is an alliance quest my couple of first fights on my lane how power lock one for instance, and the only thing you need to do in order to win that fight is basically reach one bar of power and drop a heavy attack and opponents are just going to explode. Because he's going to continuously keep gaining his planetary mass. And in that type of fights you can just take down anyone <laughs> in really, really, really silly manners. So, I do like characters like that. And there is a very good reason why we thought he might end up being balanced. And uh, I'm glad that he didn't, but that just speaks to the general quality of the champion that even the players thought that if anything's going to get balanced it's likely going to be Galen. we're glad that he didn't because kabam apparently intended the champion to function exactly this way but uh even if we are getting like this is a bit sus kabam might balance then i think that uh, speaks extremely highly of the champion's overall quality and as i said um i do think that in between like Hyperion, Galen, and also the champion that I'm putting in at spot number 11, which is Hulkling, I do think that there's argument to be made for them to be basically interchanged. And Hulkling here is in many ways quite similar to Galen. He knows exactly what he wants to be, but then in everything else he's diagonally opposite. Where Galen delivers all of his damage in one massive burst, Hulkling is quite significantly different where he does have access to decent damage until he gets level 2. Once he gets level 2 he does, you know, just start hitting like a track and uh, is more in line with a traditional cosmic character. But uh, similar to Galen, he does have immunity to all the same forms of power manipulation. And uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have the nullify immunity like Galen does, but he does have some annoying nullification countering abilities that kind of also, you know, resemble slightly Galen's abilities. But if you do nullify his unblockable or indestructible buffs, then they just get turned into passives with much more potent abilities or much more longer duration in this case so ultimately uh hulkling is one of those things in the game right now that you do have to be aware of you need to know how to fight him because he's very troublesome on defense especially if you're unaware on how to deal with him and then obviously you need to be aware that he is an offensive powerhouse one of the best balgrans champions period offensively and defensively uh, counters a ton of matchups uh, or at the very least works well enough in a ton of matchups uh, where you know he might not necessarily even be intended to by his design it's clear that both him and uh, Gallen were intended to be absolute hardcore Penny Parker counters which they are but both of them take a ton of fights that you know nobody would necessarily immediately imagine them being great at and the thing that I like is that there is an overlap, but there is also a difference in a sense of which matchups they can take. For instance, Galen is an amazing thing counter just because he can bypass virtually all of the protection stuff just by the nature of him not hitting too hard and then delivering a massive burst of damage. And uh, then there is an overlap in a sense that both of them, for instance, can fight extremely well against champions like um, Kingpin, uh, where, you know, neither one of them rely on any debuffs or having access to you know a ton of parry stuns and stuff like that and both of them can deal with the, something like that equally well and then obviously hulkling has his additional strong suits that potentially Galen does now ultimately the reason why i do prefer hulkling slightly over Galen is because i do think he's a more potent defender and i also do think that Hulkling is with the best slightly more wildly usable. I do think Galen likely has some more 
bad matchups, but I could be wrong on that. Again, it could be just the nature of the personal preference. At the moment, I do, however, well you slight Hulkling slightly, slightly more. Ironically, I do think that if you do have both of these champions at rank 3, Galen is the one that needs the rank 4 more. Uh, because with Hulkling giving him a tiny bit of extra attack, it's not going to change the fight any more than, you know, you needing one extra combo to finish up the fight. With Galen, it could mean the difference of you being able to defeat your opponent in a single detonation or not. So I do think that Galen benefits more from every single, you know, base attack point that you can give him. However, I'm still overall valuing like Hulkling slightly above Galen. And then spot number 10. And spot number 10 is all the... MVPs. It's all the classics. It's all of the champions that have been running this game with no other way to put it. None of the 2022 champions made it in top 10 so far. I do think that there is potential for many of these to end up there in the future, but at the moment in the top 10 as like the most proven of proven characters that ultimately run the game. We're going to start with the spot number 10, which I am going to put in Tiger. I think Tiger is one of the best offensive champions in the game, period. Uh, there are three neutralized champions, and I do think that it goes without the doubt that Tiger is offensively the most potent neutralized champion. Now, we are getting more and more kind of like mechanics or nodes where neutralized might get start to be hindered. But at the moment, we can definitely witness a lot of abilities and a lot more time has gone designing characters that are immune to nullify and things of similar nature. But Neutralize almost always bypasses all of that stuff. So Neutralize in itself is extremely valuable. And then obviously combine that with Tigress extreme damage potential. And in short to medium fight format, she's one of the fastest fight finishers period and that obviously combines tremendous amount of value for anywhere where competitive fights are involved because also one of the things that a lot of people don't, don't often discuss is the fact that the faster you finish the fight the less room for your own error there is and the idea there is always extremely simple if you need to bait out a special attack you know nine times out of ten there will be no problems. You're going to bait out that special attack, you're going to evade it properly, opponent's not going to clip you as you're trying to dance around, and everything's going to go fine. And then if you need to land in an intercept, you know, nine times out of ten, if you're a great player, you can land that intercept safely. But there's always that tenth time. And if you need to do it ten times in a fight, then statistically speaking, at some point, you're probably going to mess up if that is your margin for error on average. And just the fact that you can finish these fights significantly faster, therefore not having to, you know, land many intercepts or bait out many special attacks, things like that, by virtue of the fight duration, Tiger, you know, will, once you learn how to use her properly, will be one of those characters that ultimately eliminates a lot of margin for error. And... When it comes to utility, I think she has about just enough utility. I don't think she's the most utility-rich character. I think Neutralize does extremely heavy amount of lifting there. Other than Neutralize, obviously, she does have the ability to miss the projectile special attacks and then also access the Rupture, where very few champions in the game are immune or can deal with it. There's only one flat-out Rupture immune champion, but obviously there are champions that deal with debuffs. Uh, so ultimately, Tiger does have a ton of great matchups. She has amazing amount of use. She is, you know, great questing champion. The more limiting factor of Tiger is the player skill. But since Tiger is one of those champions that's well worth learning, I do think more and more people are just kind of getting over that initial fear or intimidation of, ah, I'm not good enough to play with her and starting to get on the Tiger train. Like myself, I was quite hesitant with Tiger initially just because it was quite tricky to use her. And then, you know, eventually I started using her more and more. And the more you do, the, the more it comes to you. And while I by no means am some sort of Tiger expert at the same time, you know, I feel more confident playing with Tiger now than I have done ever. And I'm better off for it because she's one of those champions that will sort out a lot of problems for you in the game. Uh, just because of how powerful she is. So spot number 10, Tiger, for sure. Great for everything offensively in the game. Alliance versus Battlegrounds, uh, questing, challenge content, so on and so forth. 
Spot number nine. Spot number nine is a completely different type of character at the moment. And in spot number nine, we are going to be putting Archangel. Archangel is again one of the oldie but goldies. I would say that he hasn't been changed, but he has. Archangel used to be even more powerful. Not a lot of people know that, but Archangel's neurotoxins used to inflict a passive stun. And then Kabam basically lied and changed it for a bullshit reason, saying that no champion should have access to a passive stun or no champion has access to a passive stun, which even back in the day was a lie because Phoenix had access to a passive stun and so did Loki, if I'm not mistaken. And obviously, one month after they took away passive stun from Archangel, they released Wasp, who coincidentally had the passive stun. Still haven't forgotten forgiven them about that and it is one of the earlier examples of Kabam being full of shit but ultimately Archangel still does exactly what he did upon the time when he was released and if anything he has become more potent over time because there are more and more champions that uh, are hard to fight and then he's great against the fact that he doesn't reduce opponent's defensive or offensive ability accuracy but he reduces opponent's ability accuracy so it means both offensive and defensive uh, definitely makes him, you know, not entirely unique, but uh, there aren't too many of the champions who do that in the game overall, still to this day, because of how powerful that ability is, and the fact that it completely shuts down a ton of nodes, so virtually anything Kabam puts on as a node in order to hinder the players, as long as you can, you know, start neutralizing them, you know, Archangels can have quite a good time with that. Additional things that made Archangel perform better than he even did initially it's just the fact that there is an increased amount of champions in a game and therefore increased amount of champions that he can be great against and not to mention the fact that when he was introduced you know primarily it was just the bleed and poison and all the other immunities were virtually new or barely non-existent but over time Kabam, uh, Kabam stopped focusing as much on bleed or poison immunity exclusively because now we have rapture now we have shock and cold snap and incinerate and different types of damaging effects which means that overall there are less bleed and poison immune champions being released uh, proportionally speaking, which again means that that is something Archangel can deal with now, and he just dominates. When you can use an Archangel quite often, he's going to be not only the best or safest, but also the fastest option by the f virtue of his crazy damage output. The only kind of annoying thing about Archangel at times can be extremely bad RNG, and sometimes when you use the champion you do feel like you're slightly cursed, but uh, ultimately he is reliable and stable enough for the occasional bad fight not to hinder his reputation and he is a mainstay staple in the game period also he does not sig he does not need sig 112 or any of that bullshit if you have him at sig 20 you're perfectly fine don't believe any of that crap spot number eight spot number eight goes to the lava lamp the torpedo, the CGR, the short to mid level fight damage guard. The damage that this guy has is absolutely insane. And again, I have spoken in length about this in virtually every single video. He should not, in theory, be working as well as he does, and I still stick by it. There are a ton of conditions that he needs to clear in order to be able to be utilized properly. He needs to be able to throw full combos, therefore evading and auto-blocking and miss mechanic champions can often screw him. He needs to be able to throw his, you know, heavy attacks, therefore debuffing opponents freely in order to be able to be utilized, you know, easily. He needs to be able to debuff the opponent without any restrictions as well as gain buffs without any restrictions. And there are all of these things that need to kind of happen or more specifically opponents cannot have specific abilities or nodes for him to work. But the fact is that he works in every game mode where you need him the most he works. He's a great, great quick questing champion. He is one of the best alliance war nukes where you can often just nuke through entire lanes with just him basically on the sheer damage output alone. He packs about just enough utility to also tackle many of the harder fights in the game such as you know 
Korg and some nasty nodes are in Wild Grounds, for instance, with his medium attacks being non-contact energy damage, with him having that incinerate and bleed immunity. And uh, then also, obviously, as a Cosmic Champion, if awakened, ability to nullify the opponent's buffs. All of that matters. Ability to access Vigilance, also, therefore, bypassing Miss, uh, if timed right, you know, can work extremely solidly. And at the moment, you know, when he works, he's kind of like an Archangel in a sense. When he can be used, he's one of the best and safest options, just by the sheer virtue of how quickly he nukes down those fights. And what he does is needed, what he does is in demand, what he does, you know, works for AW, what he does works for questing situations, what he does works for Battlegrounds as well. So we do have CGR here, and he is definitely going to be nuking people down without a doubt. Uh, it is going to be interesting actually to see how he works in the new armor break or armor up meta because uh, Yeah, uh, his base rotation is 11 hits opponents gain um, mm, I think it can still be done, but it's going to be interesting how he works in the next battlegrounds meta We'll see about that Anyway, spot number seven, and spot number seven is going to be the reason why <laughs> many religious zealots are going to attack me. <laughs> and I am dropping ghosts down. And everybody knew this was going to happen. And I am putting up ghosts in spot number seven. I do think ghosts is still great for a ton of things. I don't think she is as great as she used to be. There are many arguments for ghosts being crazy amazing and awesome and you know the fact that she gets banned for alliance wars is you know often one of the biggest things that people use as an argument that she should be at the top of, of the list and stuff like that but ultimately i do think that overall all the things considered in the game we rely on ghost less we use ghost less and much of what is being designed introduced and released in the game right now is you know not necessarily most compatible with ghost or at the very least you do not have much of a reason to run ghost over plenty of other champions at the same time it is undeniable how impactful this champion is and has been on the game uh, as a new player one of the best things that you can do for yourself is learn how to play ghost ideally unlock liquid courage double edge masteries and start wrecking havoc because she will clear more content for you than you can imagine. Ultimately, I'm not going to engage in this entire discussion right here, right now, because I made two videos where we discussed this. If you're interested, look out. There is quite literally a video Nimrod versus Ghost, and there is a video of top 10 tech rankings where I do discuss this in detail. I do think Ghost is a tremendously powerful character. Without doubt, I am not, quote-unquote, a ghost hater. And, again, purely, a uh, large part of the reasoning in this was also to see where community is at. Because I, without doubt, do think that ghost is getting chipped down a peg, step by step, step by step. She's still great. She still does a ton of things, but there are more and more things happening in the game, with the game modes, with the new champion releases, with the new node releases, with the nature of the game itself that is chipping away at the ghost potential slightly and then there are things elevating other things uh other aspects of the game which is you know increasing nimrod therefore i can tell you flat out i'm putting in ghost as number seven nimrod is number six right now both of them i put together on purpose for now and there has been a lot of food for thought with that placement obviously there are absolute ghost lover diehards and then there are also equally large group who are saying that you know yeah i agree nimrod is ultimately the better i don't use ghost pretty much at all anymore for virtually anything but i use nimrod almost every day uh so here we are i put them together i'm done with this fight i am keeping those rankings for this session i'm not saying that i will not change that up next time around i do rankings in june of 2023 what i am saying there is a nimrod versus ghost discussion video that i do recommend you go check out but i am saying you can check out tech top 10 discussion video where i go in this topic in detail as well and i'll leave that there 
and you can disagree with everything that I say, and you can blindly yell at me, then Ghost OP, Ghost should be a top pot. Or, you know, you can leave a well thought out argument, a comment. I promise I do read all the comments. And, and just keep that there. But most importantly, <laughs> don't be an ass to other summoners. All right, spot number five. <laughs> spot number five. Spot number five is going to be Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom is ultimately, again, I think, well deserving of his spot number five. I do think he is one of the most capable champions in the game. I do think that, again, he's one of those champions that will clear a ton of content for you. He is quintessentially the best mystic character, all things considered, in the game. Uh, he is going to do great for any and all questing situations where you need a mystic. He does decently well in Everest content as being one of the horsemen of uh abyss um he plays a role as a defender because he can be extremely tough and punishing to fight if you miss his level two away it's gonna hurt if you know uh you accidentally let him drop a level one for instance when he's not meant to he's gonna screw your your plans with his nullification you can get shocked and slapped against him he has armor penetration so blocking against him hurt all of those things make him very very tough to fight not to mention his massive crit resistance and then obviously offensively he's one of those champions that absolutely toys with the opponents puts them in the doom cycle thus establishing an absolute control of the fight to a point where AI has a virtually minimum input. So it makes uh, extremely safe and stable fights. And we can see that, you know, even in Balgrounds, not being the fastest Mystic Champion, for instance, he has more than enough value to still be extremely, extremely relevant. And also pretty much everywhere else in the game. I do think I made a slight mistake with the list somewhere, but there is one champion that I did want to add that I didn't, and I just realized about it, but I'll explain that later. But ultimately, spot number five goes to Dr. Doom. I think Dr. Doom uh, deserves it. Again, as I said, there has been clearly a ton of love put into the character. And I, most importantly, and here's one of the things that I love most about Dr. Doom, is how accurately Kabam captured the essence of the comic book character into the video game character because when you use dr doom it feels like you're the dr doom with his dialogue with his play style with a slap with him tormenting the opponents giving them power taking it away putting them into a doom cycle that's feeling you like a good masterminding and manipulating your opponent and basically absolutely nuking them and yeah, he just works virtually rare. I do think overall, all the things in the game consider he is one of the more valuable champions. And therefore, he's in top five. And top four. Top four. Well, fourth spot is going to go to... Where is that, where is that flaming baboon? Uh, where is that flaming? There we go. Human Touch. And Human Touch... You know, there's just not much else to be said. It's very simple. He destroys energy champions and mystics. And he does it faster. He does it more effective like virtually anybody. It is kind of ironic with his damage output in the correct matchup. Considering he is technically a ramp up champion. If you want to see exactly how ramp up each he is, bring him in Abyss. Because in Abyss, you know, he's virtually the only 5 star that can reliably solo opponents in abyss content that is how great his damage output is in those fights and that's where he ramps up to but ultimately there's just no question that torch has shaped the game there is no question of how valuable he is for every aspect of the game in battlegrounds you know torch is one of the most banned champions or when he is not banned you know Torch will affect the way you draft, the way you build your deck, and if opponent does pull a torch when you hope them not to, then you just basically lose the match. Uh, or at the very least, the round. Similar in Lions War. Opponents do try to torch proof the defense as the best they can, and if they overlook something, torch is going to run through everything. And same with questing. If you do have a lane, filled with mystics or if there's a mystic boss you know most of the time torches can nuke it or 
most importantly, and the reason why Torch keeps getting more and more popular is the fact that there are more and more energy champions being released. Therefore, he's not necessarily limited to the Mystic class. If we take a look at all the champions released in the last couple of years, you can see that even when the champions are not Mystic, they do have energy damage often in their kits. Like we have Captain Britain, energy damage. Torch can nuke it easily and fast. We have Iron Man Finty Ward. Yes, he's incinerate mute, but no flames bypass that. We have Meg Sentinel, plenty of energy attacks in there. As well, just block a couple of level ones and you're gonna get those smolders up like nobody's business. Right? Then we have Shuri, all energy, and then obviously the mystic characters. Uh, that you know he's absolutely going to nuke so every single year there are more and more champions that you know use energy damage as their base like here again we do have icarus we do have jubilee filled with energy damage we have again kitty pride incinerate mean who cares we have no flames we have nimrod all the mystics themselves then we have psychoman and every single year torch gets more and more targets that are outside of his class range. That is, in my opinion, one of the things that is going to keep him relevant. That yes, technically he's a mystic killer, but every single year he's becoming more and more energy damage killer because he gets new mystics to murder and he gets more and more champions with energy damage that are spread across all the classes. And then ultimately the, the final kind of caveat point there is no flames. And no flames have especially big impact in battlegrounds, and that's undeniable, because there's just one fight, so no flames are active every fight pretty much, and that just you know again boosts his attack even further, make sure that there's absolutely nothing in the game immune to that, and uh, lets him yeah just nuke anything. So ultimately, I do think he is currently the fourth best champion in the game, and moving on to top three. In top three, I am putting in Kingpin. I don't care what anybody else tells me. Come, argue. The man has the resume. Simple as that. Kingpin is the only dual purpose champion that has worked in every meta of Battlegrounds and also works amazingly for Alliance War, offensively, defensively, and is one of the more utilitarian questing champion staples. If you have to piece together kind of like a default questing team, I think at this point Kingpin is in there because he absolutely destroys majority of Act 6, Act 7, Act 8, any type of new content, any of these challenge modes. How many fights Kingpin just don't casually, you know, walk all over? And that's quite weird. I understand it's weird because looking at his abilities, you know, there's not really that much. <laughs> there really isn't, you know. It's like, why would Kingpin be better than Shang-Chi? But he is. Why would he be better than these or those characters? But he is. Like, ultimately, the secret does lie in the fact of how well he deals with debuffs and how he turns it into a power. The fact that they are not just damage over time or non-damaging debuffs. And even without any synergies, he will extremely reliably get rid of them. Because even if a debuff does slip through his 60% purification rate, once you reach 8 debuffs total, including your rage, he's going to turn them into overpower and then get a massive, massive attack increase. And then ultimately where most of his awesomeness lies is in his special attack. Special 1 is his utility special attack, which inflicts a 65% defensive ability accuracy reduction and 50% minus attack rating an opponent which both in together mean that he becomes extremely tanky and most of the opponent's defensive abilities won't proc and therefore he's able to bypass stuff like th safeguard things protection electros damage back and all that other stuff then obviously there is the permanent and constant healing that he has access to and then also the on-demand unstoppables on heavy attacks or level 2s that seemingly last forever, increase his damage output even further. And then the base mechanic where he does have increased combat power rate uh, obviously is also quite, quite helpful because each rage debuff uh, increases his attack by 1k and combat power rate by 5%. So he does get his specials quicker than average champions. And he starts 
fights awakened with several of those so he has increased combat power rate from the very beginning as well as extra attack making him an extremely hard hitting champion and that's kingpin it's very simple but he's just so goddamn effective and i understand what people say is like you know N nimrod's better than kingpin or gallant's better than kingpin and stuff like that and when you read the abilities and you put them side by side i might agree with if not for the fact that Kingpin has went through all of the game and is one of the best champions always for every game mode, everywhere, all the time. And those are just facts, you know. At some point, you know, you need to put aside the, the theory of why champions are amazing and what makes them amazing and look at the results. And this man does have results. He has been popular enough in Alliance War to be blacklisted. He is Balgrounds MVP. He is questing MVP. He has some of the most ridiculous and cheesy and crazy fights. But in general, all things considered, he just works all the time, non-stop. And he makes so many fights trivial. So I do think he well deserves his spot as top three champion in the game. You can yell at me, disagree, argue with me. He's there. I don't care. <laughs> and then we have top two champions. And then top two, this time I did have quite a bit an easier uh, time. I am putting in Kitty second. And the thing with Kitty is that just ironically, as we discussed Kingpin, as unremarkable on paper and i don't know why kingpin works or stuff like that it is opposite of that on paper it is borderline ultimate mcoc champion um because in theory you know she could pretty much do everything and all of kitty's utility pretty much lies and everything everything in kitty's kit Majority of it is relatively inconsequential. Obviously, all of it helps her slightly and adds her a little bit, but you could get rid of about 90% of that and just leave, leave, leave a couple of lines here. Like, you know, the phasing thing. And, and that's it. The fact that she takes no damage whilst phasing and when she phases when she dashes forward. That, that's what she does. She phases and she takes no damage. <laughs> And, and everything else, you know, the whole prowess mechanic and the fact that she can increase the temperature with the incinerates and make her prowess more potent and all that other stuff. You know, it, it's neat, but it, it's kind of like in service of the spacing mechanic and it is extremely, extremely powerful. And we can see all the time why. At the same time, Kitty is one of those champions that is kind of like high risk high reward in a sense where the fights with kitty typically go perfect until one moment when they don't and then it kind of tumbles down immediately but as a community we have been getting better and better at taming this character and utilizing her in more and more different scenarios and ultimately i do think that as a champion she just have quite enough to be at the very peak of the game because she does work in all of the game modes, she works with all of the mastery setups. She does function, you know, both offensively and defensively. And though defensively, most people by now have kind of figured her out. But uh, ultimately, there's just no denying that uh, she is a game-changing character. Uh, she's worth learning. She's worth, uh, you know, studying. And uh, she is going to be capable of doing a lot for you. Does take a while to get used to. But the reason why she's second and not the first is is quite straightforward, I would say. And and that comes to the ease on compa compatibility of landing her abilities with the content. I think a, a lot of what Kitty does quite often in the game is being done by the character who is number one spot just a lot more straightforward a lot more easy and when it comes to push and show i do think kitty is let's say more present specifically in alliance wars uh, that is the game mode where i definitely would put the advantage to kitty but i think the rest of the game and battlegrounds i would say that uh, hercules is the one that is in the lead 
And I do think Hercules is the best champion in the game currently. And that again is one of those things where just look at the resume. He is essentially the king of Alliance Quest. I don't think anybody's going to dispute that. So we can move on from that. He's also one of the best questing champions because he can tear through quests like nobody's business. Um, ramp up and once he's ramped up you know he's going to be delivering so much damage so fast and most importantly he can just ignore the nodes more so than kitty i think in my opinion because uh even if you do encounter something that uh you know might not necessarily be overly compatible you can just be immortal whilst being unblockable and just go on a complete rampage and if the worst comes to worst just throw in a revive and carry on so he's one of the best questing champions Similarly, he's also one of the best, you know, challenge mode champions. He has enough damage to do Everest type of content. Uh, then he is by far, by far the best incursions champion, which at the moment in the game is still relevant uh, on monthly basis. Uh, he is one of the quintessential alliance war champions, where he also functions exceedingly well as a defender, because he can stall quite a bit of time with his infuriate, he can make plenty of abilities fail, with his immortality he can stall out the fight, his stun immunity, he can mess people up sometimes, so he does function extremely well as a defender as well for alliance for stalling purpose, and alliance, sorry, for in Balgrounds for stalling purpose, and alliance where I don't think he functions great as a defender, uh, but offensively obviously he's extremely capable in both alliance wars and in battlegrounds so ultimately i think it's very hard not to give it to hercules at the moment hercules is the most brain dead character in the game it's just uh you know grab a hercules and go smack some stuff <laughs> also additional things obviously that have been helping out hercules especially recently more and more is the fact that he does uh have access to heralds uh Pre fights, thus making him even more liquid courage double edge friendly, turning him into an infinite regeneration machine and uh, giving him a fail safe on his special attacks. Then, obviously, also Odin's pre fights can be quite helpful for specific game modes. Everything else that he benefits from and uh, extended intercept windows, which is actually a bit of a worry now. <laughs> because Hercules is the only champion in the game, as far as I can tell, that has extended intercept windows because we do have many champions that are awarded exactly in the same as hercules for when an intercept should or should not count and hercules is the only one who has extremely wide windows that count it as an intercept as a comparison we have venom pool and black panther and a handful of others where you need to be much 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 more and more precise so seeing what kabam did to hood where there was a mythic code that never worked, but apparently after Kabam changed hood, you know, it's working as intended. But, you know, we somehow should have known about it because there is a line in the code that no player has ever seen and that Kabam finally fixed for hood. Who knows what lines are there in for Hercules in future, but all the while, for now, while he functions as he does, I do think Hercules is the best champion in the game. And if you don't have one, you should get one. If you have one, you should rank one. If uh, you don't like using one, you should suck up and use one anyways, because he will definitely save you a ton of time and resources. Anyways, that is it. So, <laughs> quite a long one here. But uh, here's the new ranking. Again, feel free to disagree with me. Feel free to smack me in the comment section to your liking. as for I have insulted your family's honor and dignity, and I take full responsibility for having a head on my own shoulders, thinking for myself, and having the audacity to tell you what I think. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm going to catch you guys later. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the